So now let's get to today's feature segment with Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. And since she just mentioned Goldman Sachs, and I know that's one of your picks, I mean, before I even get to the markets and everything, why do you have Goldman Sachs on your radar? Well, it's really interesting because Goldman is, is a major bank. And when you look at the performance of that stock in 2019, the last time it hit new highs was almost a year ago. So the market had a phenomenal year in 2019. Where was Goldman Sachs? It, it, was, it, it really didn't perform in 2019. So this is a really big earnings for me to be watching this on Wednesday morning right. they're out because I think this is the time, I don't know what it does on the earnings, but if it has a gap up around 250 that's where you want to look. Goldman will probably go straight back right up to the highs. That's what the right. stock really needs to do. Yeah, and they put a 290 target over at JMP today. And the company is in the midst of the five-year expansion plan and seeing uh, growth and that they're hiring more employees for China, growth for China. So that was some of the ideas behind that JMP upgrade to an outperform. So how are you feeling about the markets? 2020 is here. Phenomenal. I mean, what a great year. We've been off to a good start. We're making new highs today. Today we're making new highs. And when you look at 2019, you say, how can we get any better? How can we go in higher? And you know what? People, unfortunately, traders, I know you have a lot of traders that watch the show, traders were shorting the market last week. Terrible thing to do. You right. cannot short this market at this point. We are so strong and everyone's waiting to see if there's a China deal in the next week, next two weeks, this month. And if there isn't, I expect that we'll see volatility. But today we're even seeing volatility because people didn't think we were higher either even here still today, and we are. You, you have to be long the market and long strong stocks if you want to make money right now. If you're not, then you're in a waiting holding position to see what happens with the China trade deal to see if there's any shorts you could put on. Right, so you're saying put some money to work for 2020. You yes. certainly wouldn't sit on the sidelines. Another name that you liked is one that's been a, a high flyer, and that is Tesla. And hitting new highs today, in fact, got a new upgrade and price target boost up to uh, 612 at Opco. Just saying that they have so many great things to say about Tesla. Let's hear what you're saying about Tesla. Well, that's another stock when you look in 2019. That didn't make the lift until about October. So really late in the year 2019 did that start, stock start to rally. And when you look at all the problems that happened with Elon Musk and those tweets, and then you look at now, you say it's almost like it didn't even happen when you look at the stock because it really did go through the price point that he said and beyond now we hit up over 500 today is 600 likely in the next two three weeks i can't say for sure about that but it's almost like you're seeing something that's very unique and very rare in tesla right now in the last couple of days it's called panic buying normally you have panic selling now it's like panic buying people want to get in want to get in want to get in and they feel like they got to get it now because they think it's going to run up and it is running up and again it's momentum there were right. a lot of people shorting that stock though last week too. Terrible idea because it's so strong. Yeah, and it's up 108% just in the three Huge. months to the year point of the momentum. Over 100% in three months is a very big move. And in that Opco note with that 612 price target, they wrote that it's reached a critical scale and has um, sufficient to support sustainable, positive uh, free cash flow. So that was why they were positive there. I also, um, I know you're bearish on Boeing, right? We have changing of the guard, but a lot of headlines still surrounding that one. Well, I think the stock, again, when you look at the market and you look at Boeing, it hasn't been performing well. Mm -hmm. Now, that stock obviously affects the Dow because it's a percent, big percentage of the right. Dow. So when you look at the diamonds, that could pull and drag the diamonds down more, the ETF for the Dow. But ultimately, I think that stock just looks really lower to me. You know, crashes notwithstanding, I'm just saying technically speaking, when I look at that stock, it looks lower. Remember that big right. lift that that had back, um, it was again, early 2019, then it gapped down and had that massive day on a gap down that it rallied up like umpteen points. Yes. Ever since then, never saw the high of that day. Never saw the right. high of that day that was back in March of 2019. It was a crash I think had happened that created that fall off, rallied and then never went anywhere. Baselined all out the whole year. Tell me about Beyond Meat when we talk about momentum. Um, this is moving about 30%. 
percent rally in three days. What a, what it's crossed over the hundred dollar mark, hundred five positive comments about China growth, maybe a McDonald's expansion, even more so than what we've seen so far in Canada. Um, what are your thoughts on Beyond Meat? We talked about this one last summer. It was a great play then to go long. Then the stock really just kind of fell off a cliff. I mean, when you look at when it first came out in the IPO, 45 was the low. I think that's where it opened and it's rallied since then. But at one point, it was just dropping off, dropping off. Now, I know today we hit over 100, but it's still not back up in an uptrend. And anybody that's right. long that, I'd say take your profits because I don't like that stock till it gets over about 130. And the earnings on that are not until March. So between now and March, there's a lot of time in there that something could happen. Right. Also, um, I have to circle back to what was one of your darlings, and that was Disney. Yeah. Um, that was a hot trade for a long time. You didn't mention Disney. You didn't have it as a buy. You didn't have it as a sell. What are you thinking about Disney these Disney, days? Disney really, I think Disney is a long-term, if you want to be invested, long-term swing trade. I like the stock. It's strong, but it's, it's, calm, it's really not going anywhere. I think you're going to have to wait for their earnings on that one to see really right. if that can hit up higher. If it doesn't, then it's for sure lower. I still like Disney. I still think it's a good buy long term. But as far as traders, as far as a right. play, even for the next couple of days and the next couple of weeks, it's really not going anywhere. It's almost it's almost looks dead. If you look at the stock, there's like no momentum in it. Like when you look at something like Tesla and you look at something like Disney or even look at the market and you look at something like Disney, Disney's not anywhere near the highs. The market's making new highs every other day. Right. So you say, you know what? Again, you want to put your money to work right now. You want to make cash today, this week. you got to be in stuff that's moving, that has volume that has momentum. And right, right now, that's not Disney. I can't say why. Again, I still right. think it's strong. All right. And well, we just got those Oscar nominations. Netflix and Disney got yeah. a bunch of them, but we'll watch for that as well. Sure. Melissa Armo, founder and owner of The Stock Swoosh. Thank you for joining us on the show. Still ahead, we discuss the mighty small caps and some biotech movers that you may want to keep a closer eye on. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back just after a quick break.